Alright, at the moment it is hot, it is dry, it is dusty, we've got the summertime blues. Um, we thought we'd better do an episode just showing um, a little bit of hardship. Uh, you know, it's sometimes we, we might make it seem like everything's a little bit idyllic here, but you know, we, we do face some challenges and at the moment that is dry, dusty conditions and we haven't had rain for, for several months now, so nothing of note, everything's very, very dry. Um, we do have a dam. You can see that it is drying up, it is shrinking, but we've still got water there, so that's not too bad. And the rainwater, the rainwater for the house, you know, we've still got plenty of that. So that, that's not so much the issue. We've got water for us and we've got water for our livestock, which is, which is a big concern for us. But our fences here, so we rely very heavily on electric fences. And as soon as the, the dirt goes dry, um, it doesn't actually carry electricity well, because of course an electric fence, when you touch it, then the electricity travels through you, through your feet, into the ground and back to the earth stakes of um, an electric fence energizer. I thought that was going to be enough. I thought we had sufficient rainfall to keep enough moisture in the ground for that, that system of electric fence. It looks like I'm going to have to rethink things um, and actually put my negative wire, positive wire, negative wire like I've seen um, and, and I'll have to upgrade some of my fencing. But in the meantime, what I want to talk about was our cheeky pigs. <laughs> so um, around about Christmas, I was about 100 kilometres into a 300 kilometre drive to go and join family for Christmas. And one of my distant neighbours um, contacted us and said, your pigs are on the road, they're having a great time, but they are free. So they were held in a paddock behind some uh, poly wire. When I say poly wire, it's like polyethylene rope with a thin twist of metal that carries the electricity. It's, you know, it's flexible and it's good for making temporary divisions on your property. The pigs were held up at one end of the paddock. Um, that was keeping them out of the dam, but it was keeping them out of the rest of the paddock. And down at that bottom corner, I actually had an open, an open gate. Um, I'd received our dairy cow and I never closed it. So I'm a pretty pretty bad property owner in that respect or property manager so the pigs got out through there so I raced back um, rounded up the pigs they weren't too keen to go anywhere they know where they're where they're getting lots of food um, but I couldn't put them back in that paddock because like I said there was a dam there and if they were just going to freely go under the poly wire because it's not carrying enough charge anymore they would have wrecked the dam so I come and I've brought them into the goat enclosure here so the goat enclosure has all these wires it is you know, the, the, the metal wire carries sufficient charge, even with um, compromised earthing, it still gives a nice pop, so the pigs don't challenge that. So I stuffed them in here and went about my, my Christmas. But when I came back, they were um, doing enormous damage around by the, the roots of a fajoa tree here, getting into everything that they shouldn't. Anything uh, you don't want an animal to do, they will definitely do that. Uh, it was only a matter of time before they smelled eggs in our chicken coop or even the chicken poo tempted them they would have you know, they would have just gone straight through the chicken wire so I wanted to confine them back to this area which is the old uh, a bit of an old rubbish tip on this farm there's lots of metal and bricks and things like that which they're, they're digging up for me which is which is pretty good so the poly wire wasn't doing it I did have to install um, a star picket strainer just very very uh, you know made a floating brace there put some barbed wire and um, I just I don't really like barbed wire but I thought oh well I'll just put that there as a temporary fence surely the pigs won't want to go under that given time even barbed wire they got their necks under and they strained that um, to the point where they were able to slip under it they got some pretty nasty cuts but those pigs were, they just wanted to go and have a, a sniff around those chooks. So now what I've done is I've got the same poly wire and I've run it as an offset about a foot back from the barbed wire. When the pigs come along, they can touch that poly wire. And they'll get a little, just a little bit of a crack, um, but it's not enough to dissuade them. But once they hit that metal wire, 
the star pickets are actually going into the ground deep enough where it does carry enough charge and the electric fence gives them the full boot so that's keeping them away from the barbed wire they can't they can't <laughs> get anywhere onto it uh, for any extended period of time but it's also teaching them respect for that poly wire because i'd like to use that in future so that's how we've we've managed it at the moment if you look behind me it, it looks like a set of mad max or something like that it's complete desolation there um like i said that was an old rubbish tip so i don't mind that i don't mind that the pigs are over impacting this they're getting rid of bracken fern that was still remnant after the first run of pigs that we went through there was still some persistent weeds that's all that's all gone now um, they are digging up bricks and metal and everything else like that so once they're moved out i will be able to take that to the the tip all the metal actually is free to tip because it gets recycled which is really great um, because they're impacting this area which had been damaged before they're not impacting the rest of the property that we've worked so hard to sort of restore um, i did run our dairy cow astrid that you might have met if, it, if we'll go and have a look at her if you're only new to these episodes i did run her through very quickly and she's trampled everything down eaten what she could which was not much um, and sort of mulched those paddocks with uh, with all the all the growth pushed over so all of that soil is sheltered from the uv and is uh is pretty safe so the pigs have been in here, they really smashed it. One of the other reasons why we move our animals around a lot, not only are we improving the soil by moving them uh, along, you know, in regenerative agricultural sort of fashion, um, the other thing is when you move your animals, they leave their manure behind. They're not living in their own filth. So I was worried about that, but what's actually happened is because the pigs have uh, ground all of this up quite a bit, it's very, very fine dust and that desiccates their manure, their wee, as soon as it comes out of the pig, it, it sort of uh, dries it out. But the other thing is as soon as I let our chickens out, they're very, very interested in pig manure. And I think the reason why is we get a high protein chicken food, which is just mostly grains, just, just ground up enough so lupins and corn is cracked, but everything else is fairly good. We soak that overnight and it sprouts it and it ferments it to some degree. The pigs absolutely go crazy for it. It puts good condition on them. You don't need too much of it to, to keep weight on there. Um, but the other thing is we think that there's some undigested grains in there and the chickens, <laughs> they think that is a payday. So the first thing they do when they get out, they hunt down every last chook poo, scatter it to the four winds, get all the grain, and by scratching it, they bury it back into the soil. So every day I come to feed the pigs and I'll do a visual inspection. Can I see any manure? Not usually. Um, and can I smell any, most importantly, because that's the big giveaway. Uh, and I'm about five meters away from the pig's main latrine. I cannot smell a thing. So it, there's not a month that goes by where I, I can't find something to really love about having, having chickens. The goats, I'm pretty sure, uh, they, can, they can just, I've made the height of it so the goats can still have free rain go up. They don't, they don't fight with the pigs, the pigs don't injure them. They do try and eat the pig food, but the pigs are quite aggressive in the, you know, they, they, they'll shoulder the goats out of the way, but they never bite them or anything like that. But I'm, I'm pretty sure that they, they'll be looking forward to not jumping over this fence. They have nicked their udders a couple of times on the barbed wire, which is, it's, I just don't like that stuff. Um, but we're just, I'll, I'll pull it down once the pigs are gone. Um, and in future, if I do want to confine a pig, I'll make smooth wire, but I will have, I will have like a, a negative and a positive all in the, in the fence. But that's part of the general fence overhaul that, that I'm, I'm going to be doing after this hot, hot, dry summer is over. So there we go. It looks a complete mess, but in six months, I bet this place is going to look absolutely amazing. So much, uh, much different to those, those cheeky pigs. Um, Astrid, our dairy cow here that we, we have only just really got, um, she respects the fence absolutely. So we're able to um, contain her quite readily down here by the, by the old dilapidated house. So she's pretty much cleaned up all of the grass here, but we tried her out in the other paddock for as long as there was any grass, but now it is just completely dry. It's just the, um, it's just the, the flowering stalks left over from, from all of the grasses that we grew. She's here at the moment and we're supplementing her feed with uh, spent brewery grain from the local brewery, which she absolutely loves and has got her in pretty good condition. Um, we had to buy hay for her. That's, um, that's a bit difficult to come by at the moment because everyone's in the same boat. So they're either stockpiling their hay or the prices have gone up a bit. We've got some friends that did sort us out a reasonable deal. Um, it's not the best hay, so Astra doesn't really love it, but we've also got apples as well. So apples, um, some of that hay, and of course the brewery grain 
ha has kept her in pretty good condition. The only um, the only thing that she does have is sorry Astrid is she's got a couple of lumps here on her flank. At the moment we've got those biting marsh flies and they do give the animals hell at the moment. It's um, I feel a little bit sorry for them, but she does have that nice long tail and she's been swishing that around a fair bit. So. That's been, uh, that's been the summertime blues. We haven't been able to, um, you know, we only got a couple of weeks where we could rotate our cow around. Having said that, where we put her, she did such a good job of clearing out all the very snaky, nasty bits. Uh, There's a lot of undergrowth around some of the trees and wood piles around the place. She got in there and she ripped out all the grass. She's done an amazing job. And I haven't had to whip a snip around, <laughs> around the old place here because Astrid's taken care of it. So there's been some downsides, but there's, there's been a real upside. She's got a calf in there, she's growing uh, pretty well. When, when she first came, she was really, really bony and you could see all her ribs, but it looks like that brewery grain, you know, it's about 12% protein. Um, it's putting condition on her pretty well and she's starting to look nice and fat. So we're trying not to feed her too much because we don't want a big calf. We've had um, locals tell us that you don't want to have a, you know, you don't want to feed that calf up so she's so big that when it comes out, you know, you've got a problem. Um, so it's, it's not too bad that we have a cow actually, you know, bringing up uh, her cow embryo in this, in this hard time. So don't worry Astrid, it'll rain again in a few months. So this is the most comfortable spot in the garden uh, in the morning. It's in shade all morning because we're under this lovely cork oak. And the plants that are growing in this part of our garden are actually doing really, really well. Um, the sun is just so severe that they do a lot better just getting sun half of the day. Um, we've noticed that our plants in full sun, they're just struggling a bit this year. It's just been so hot. Um, we've had a lot of days over 40 degrees and um, without setting up a shade structure over all of our plants and all of our garden, um, they've just really suffered. But I honestly haven't spent much time down here. So we let the garden go a little bit more wild. We sort of just put seedlings in and sort of let them do their own thing. And um, as is probably to be expected, they didn't go as well as they did last year when we um, really pruned them and trellised them and tied them and monitored them and shaded them and all those things that you do to look after plants in the summertime and get a really good harvest. Having said that, um, I don't think I could have dealt this year with the harvests that we were getting last year. We were doing a lot of preserving and cooking and sharing and things like that with friends and family and I just haven't had the time. I mean we've still been getting plenty of food off this garden and I think it's the right amount of food for us um, but we could be producing a lot more but the pumpkins have turned out really great here in this shaded spot. So they only get sun for half the day and they seem to really like that. The growth has just been phenomenal. There's tons of fruit on them. Hopefully there's flavor, we'll have to see. Um, our round pumpkins that we grew last year, they didn't have the best flavor. Uh, they were a Queensland blue. This year we're growing a Jarradale in that round variety. So we'll see if they have better flavor. We have butternut pumpkins growing in full sun. Uh, and they're just starting to come on. We planted them a bit later than these ones. So uh, they're doing all right and um, they were delicious last year. So I'm assuming they'll be delicious again this year, but we'll have to see. We put some blueberry bushes in at the very start of summer and I think they were raised in a nursery in shade and they've really suffered. All their leaves died off in that afternoon hot sun. Our asparagus look really great. Uh, we're still not picking them. They're, it's their second year of setting in and next year we should be able to pick a few just over a small period of time. Um, so that's really exciting, but they've really established well. So I think we did okay with those. Um, there was some concern about us planting them in spring, but they seem to be fine. So to take the edge off the hot weather in the afternoons, we have been leaving the farm, um, jumping in the air conditioned car, driving to the beach, driving to local lakes and dams to go swimming. Uh, Constance just loves that. She's been sleeping through the night now. Um, not 
all the time, but she's done it three times now. I'm not doing it yet, but hopefully I will be soon. Um, and I think that's partly due to having those big swims. It really tires her out and sets her up for a good night's sleep and she stays nice and cool. So that's been really great. We have had 40, many, many days over 40 degrees this year. So it's a lot hotter summer than last year. I think last year was an exceptionally mild summer. This is more the norm. So next year, I think we will be arranging a few more shade structures in our garden and just getting a little bit more on top of our trellising so that the plants don't suffer so much in that really um, intense sunlight and heat. So perhaps you can hear that buzzing over the microphone, it's quite loud uh, here and that is another drawback of summer. So at the moment we don't have a lot of flies, We've, uh, we started out with a ton of flies because of all the cow patch, you know, this is a production area. Um, the dung beetles have done their work but now we do have uh, marsh flies which bite and we do have blow flies. So when we have these days that are really super hot, you know, getting in the high 30s and on their way into the 40s, all of those flies somewhere else, they try and find, you know, anywhere out of the sun. That means this area, and I'll show you what my shed's like, um, they just fill up with these blow flies. Anytime we go through the doors, we have to sort of do a bit of a dance, get rid of our uh, hangers on and quickly slip through. But even still, you know, we still get blowflies inside the house and in this temperature, they're restless. They don't settle down on one area, so they're very, very hard to hunt down. Um, you know, but it's just one of those things. It's, it doesn't last forever. Uh, you know, it's only a month or two, but it, it's one of those annoying things, you know, buzzing insects. So there we go, you can hear that hum in the shed, maybe even see these flies. It is absolutely <laughs> incredible, it sounds like. Um, I've got a, a hive of bees in here at the moment. They get trapped against that window. Um, it, it's kind of crazy. Not a bad thing is if um, I'm quite busy in here and move around a lot, they tend to try and find somewhere else to be. And there's no biting flies in here, which is okay. These are just just blow flies. But <laughs> you, you might have heard that, and they are. Uh, it's it's just absolutely chock a block in here. Come here. Oh, good boy. All right, I just wanted to end this uh, video on a bit of a happier note and make a little introduction. Uh, a new member of the family. This is Zip or Zippy. He's got a bit of a bite on his face because he tried to get a bit too close to Jet. Um, but <laughs> normally they're the, they're the best of friends. You're a little bit worried about us um, getting another dog. What do you think? Yeah, I didn't want to take on a, another puppy with a new baby in the house because Jet was a bit of work and yeah, I just wasn't ready to take on that job. It's, it's a responsibility to take on a new dog. Hmm. Yeah. Um, so we went to see Zippy and I was very satisfied with how he came up, how he behaved with us. He's immediately happy with being, um, being held. Yeah. The family that he came from was absolutely lovely um, and I was pretty confident. So he's already responding well to, to training, Pascal. Yeah. Um, I've been using operant conditioning on him so we'll see how that goes he, he's responding quite well the reason why we do have another dog is I wanted to get into the truffle finding game um, so hopefully Jet's going to come along um, but I'm, I'm fairly certain that this little guy will train up well just from what I've already seen um, he's responding exceptionally well so of course we will be covering um, training up a truffle dog and uh, you can join us for that obviously the title of the video will give it away um, when that's the subject matter so you can follow along with the the career of Zip the Wonder Dog <laughs> he's showing a lot of promise oh, yeah. d despite being um, a total sook bear <laughs> So anyway, thank you very much to everyone um, as usual that supports us in the comments section, all of our patrons who support us financially, those people that send us a little something um, on PayPal and yep. all the other Super ways. Thanks. Super thanks and all the rest of it. We really, really appreciate it. We love having you join us every week and we hope to see you at the next episode. Beautiful. <laughs>